One victim, six bullets. Another victim, nine bullets. That's not just an ordinary murder. That's a brutal killing. She had a whole act that she had put together. So she would be out there in her shorts, and she would hitch a ride. And once in, she would start with a story about how she needed to go to wherever this person looked to be going, and that she needed to get money and wouldn't know if you could help me out. And if they were interested, fine. But if they weren't, I'd just get off the next exit and try again. She didn't kill everyone that picked her up. It's typical of serial killers. There will be several opportunities, and they'll pass them up for some reason, and then they'll strike again. That's a hell of a lot of men I went through before the next jerk came along, and I used protection. I think the most surprising aspect of Aileen Wornos was how people warmed up to her. They had no idea what was going on inside her head. Obviously, if they did, they wouldn't have picked her up. And that was the last ride they ever took. David Demore was the prosecutor in Aileen Warnos' case. I mean, what, even 30 years since her first murder, what sticks out to you about this case still? Well, I think it was that uh, Aileen was really a one of a kind, uh, very troubled mind, a great deal of anger, animosity, and hatred towards people. And when she exploded, she really exploded on the scene. She came literally out of nowhere and went on a killing spree, uh, leaving a trail of death wherever she went. And when you were prosecuting this, I mean, she claimed this was self-defense. Uh, she would go to all of these different rest stops. She would lure these victims into the woods. I mean, tell me what it was like to try and prosecute that kind of defense. Well, when Eileen Warnos presented the defense during the trial of self-defense, we were able to establish by the way the homicides had occurred uh, that it was impossible to be a self-defense argument. We were able to prove that in several of them, the men were actually running away from her. They were shot in the back. In one instance, a man was prone on the ground. His vertebrae had been severed. He was paralyzed, and she shot him in the head uh, from a downward angle. It's hardly a self-defense when your victim is paralyzed and unable to move or running away from you. And I'm sure what was striking to you was this complex personality. She was charming sometimes, violent at others. I mean, how did you reconcile this person that you were trying to make sure saw the other side of a jail cell? I'm not sure you can reconcile the mentality of Eileen Warnos. Uh, yes, she had maybe some charming moments, but far and few between. Uh, she had developed into an extremely... Uh, angry, uh, literally rageful person. And that rage could, wasn't going to be contained, and she took it out on whoever she had the opportunity to take it out on. Uh, I've often referred to her as a, uh, a killer that robbed, not a robber that killed. Hmm. You know, she admitted to seven murders. Do you think she had more victims than what she admitted to? Yes, I'm convinced she did. Um, we were unable to recover one of the bodies, a Mr. Peter Sims. And there was another gentleman in a, an area near the county where I practiced uh, whose body was never uh, recovered, but he went missing at the same time, similar circumstances around the highways. And it would have been a location where Eileen would have frequented. So I'm guessing nine men uh, at minimum uh, met their fate at her hands. It is really chilling when you hear you describe this, David. We appreciate you being with us. And, and you at home, you can watch all of this. Very scary people. We are airing this Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time and Pacific, only on HLN.